So this is Christopher Wray, the day he became the FBI director. There he is, taking the oath of office, an oath that I believe he will go on to break on numerous occasions. And in the middle there, who's that? There's Andrew McCabe. What is he doing there? Andrew McCabe? Anyway, he'd be fired in less than a year. No, I don't like Christopher Wray, the FBI director. In fact, the FBI, I'm sorry, I don't like that organization anymore. They have failed us. They have deceived us. And what they pulled in the 2020 election and beyond, looks like a lot of those guys did not live up to their oath of office. I want to revisit the situation on January 6th. When people arrived at the Capitol, this question did not even occur to me. Do you realize there's a possibility that the FBI had either agents or informants staged at the Capitol in Trump attire and MAGA attire waiting for the crowds to get there to blend in that it was part of the plan? Why can't Director Ray give this good congressman a straight answer? And there's something else we noticed we'll show you. Did you have confidential human sources dressed as Trump supporters inside the Capitol on January the 6th prior to the doors being opened? Again, I had to be very careful. It should be a no. Can you not tell the American people? No, we did not have confidential human sources dressed as Trump supporters positioned inside the Capitol. Gentlemen's time has expired. You should not read anything into my decision uh, not to share information. Director Ray, confidential human gentlemen's sources. time has expired. Oh, boy. There's no reason, no reason not to share that, unless, of course, you want to protect the reputation of the FBI. There's also no legitimate reason to have had people staged inside the Capitol dressed in MAGA attire to blend in. We can't get a straight answer. I think he's concealing something, don't you? Take a look at this, the close-up of his mouth. I, uh, I'm no body language expert, but take a look at what's happening there. See that quivering? This is a man who's nervous. Happens more. Now the anger. And the nervousness. He's hiding something from us, just like the entire bureau, I believe, is. And this is not new, of course. This is the FBI that is headquartered in the J. Edgar Hoover Building. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> J. Edgar Hoover. Don't we know enough about this guy where he's been discredited? But we're renaming bases. We're renaming Army and Marine Corps bases, but this thing is still named for J. Edgar Hoover, who apparently blackmailed Martin Luther King. The FBI has been screwing up for decades, actually. Uh, we like to give him the benefit of the doubt, but I'm sorry, those days are over. <laughs> Who remembers the anthrax attacks? Remember this? The anthrax letters mailed out, killed people. We thought, well, this must be coming from, this must be state-sponsored terrorism. And then they focused on uh, Dr. Stephen Hatfield. Remember him? The wrong guy. Back in 2001, 2002, they, they were all over him. They had him under surveillance. They ransacked his house, put his girlfriend in solitary for a time. This guy had it right about the FBI. I want to look my fellow Americans directly in the eye and declare to them, I am not the anthrax killer. I know nothing about the anthrax attacks. I had absolutely nothing to do with this terrible crime. It has an investigation that is characterized by the apparent avoidance of any major avenue of inquiry except the one decided upon by the Attorney General. Most importantly, it is driven by a compelling and overwhelming desire that the FBI look good at any cost, regardless of the price and individual freedom, due process, common decency, and civil liberties. That's how they work. That's how they've always worked. It seems to be in the FBI's DNA. And by the way, yes, he was completely innocent. And finally, seven or eight years later, they found the guy who did it, Dr. Ivins. And the FBI got there, I can't say in the nick of time, because, uh, well, Dr. Ivins was, was already dead. So in the meantime, they can't handle the basics. 
They're actually going into the realm of social media and elections. The FBI talking to Twitter and Facebook in the run-up to the election, warning them about a Russia disinformation campaign. And by the way, it wasn't just Facebook. It was Google. It was LinkedIn, YouTube, all these, all these entities warning them about the laptop.